In this video, we're going to formalize our discussion on long-run equilibrium by doing the derivation for the long-run market supply uh, when there is entry and exit. And this leads into our discussion on long-run competitive equilibrium. So in the last video, we derived the long-run market supply when there was no entry and exit and the individual firm's uh, supply function. So in this video, we're going to now extend our assumptions to long-run market supply when there is free entry and exit and lead into the discussion on long-run competitive equilibrium. And we're going to start, okay, we're going to start with the case of uh, a constant okay, cost industry. Okay, so if the capital size K is variable, then the equilibrium of existing firms in the market is given merely by the intersection of the long-run market supply curve with a corresponding market demand curve. So what you'll notice is that, again, when we're in the long run, no input is held fixed. All inputs are variable. Okay, so note that an individual firm's long-run cost, okay, uh, and therefore the long-run market supply function, because we derive that from the cost function, includes something called a normal profit. Okay, so a key concept to learn is a normal profit. And essentially, the normal profit is some profit that accrues to an entrepreneur as a payment for their services, for providing organization, or for bearing risk, etc. And Essentially, okay, uh, it includes the opportunity costs of inputs which are owned by the entrepreneur but are used in the production of a firm's product. So we can think of uh, economic profit as we discussed in the last series on cost functions. So economic profit that you get that by subtracting uh, accounting costs and opportunity costs of entrepreneurship from your total revenue. And essentially, those opportunity costs of entrepreneurship are your normal profit. And what we'll notice that if there are no incentives for profit-maximizing firms to enter or exit the industry, then the market is said to be in long-run equilibrium. And uh, that condition for long-run equilibrium, as we'll see um, as we go on in this video, occurs when price is equal to your long-run marginal cost and equal to your long-run average cost. And each firm will operate at its minimum point of, the, of its own okay, long-run average cost curve. And the implication is that at long-run equilibrium, okay, economic profit is zero. So again, the condition of long-run equilibrium occurs when the price is equal to your long-run marginal cost, which is equal to your long-run average cost, in such a manner that each firm operates at the minimum point of its own long-run average cost curve, which implies that in the long run, economic profit is equal to zero. So let's get this, uh, let's get this concept better by doing a graph. So... Here we have, uh, on the, on the left-hand side, we have the firms. Okay, so this is the firms, individual, uh, individual uh, graph to derive the supply function of the firm. Again, that's the point of long-run marginal, of the marginal cost curve um, above, um, at, above minimum ABC, which in case that's just AC, so all points above that. All points here above that uh, constitute to the firm's long-run supply curve. And we have here the market. Okay. So consider this scenario first. Say we have a price P1. So that's this price here. That price okay, is, again, the firm takes price as given. And that's derived between the intersection of demand and long-run supply. Okay, so that's the intersection between demand and long-run supply. So if since we have all like firms, if we add all the firms up, we get this condition in P1. Uh, and that's the market price that's set. So at P1, okay, we will charge um, 
we will charge a market price equal to P1. Okay, that's this one. And the corresponding market quantity is this one, which is, say, Q1. Okay, now, what you'll notice is that at P1, firms in the market make some sort of normal profit. They make some economic profit, right? Because its costs, its costs are until here, okay? So this is its costs. So it chooses to produce, say, this Q, okay? Each firm will produce this much, so this is Q1, okay? It produces, okay, it makes this much money, that uh, rectangle there, but it only costs this much to make the said uh, quantity. So the firm, okay, makes, okay, makes abnormal profit or it makes some normal profit. And if a firm makes normal profit, Okay, if firms in a perfectly competitive market make normal profit, it's an incentive for other firms okay, to enter the market. Okay? So the assumption of free entry guarantees that new firms are able to enter the industry and produce that same homogenous good. And by assumption, these new firms who can choose to enter the market Okay, those new firms to enter the market have the same complete information as the old existing firms. In which case, these new firms will add to their supplies to the already existing supply, and it will result okay, in the long run uh, the long run supply curve shifting to the right. Okay, it's an incentive for firms to uh, enter the market, right? So uh, because there's profit. So what will happen is since firms enter the market, they can now produce more. The overall market quantity will produce more. So long-run supply will shift to the right. And new firms will continue to enter for as long as they can make a positive economic, for as long as they make positive economic profits. And the long-run supply will continue to shift to the right until it intersects some market demand at a price in which the new entrants would make zero economic profits. So let's illustrate that a bit. Okay, so say um, because of these um, of this abnormal profit in this case, long run supply okay, will shift um, to the right and that increases the new firms in the market. So say it's here. Okay, so say we have this one long run supply okay and we have an intersection here so since new firms entered the market okay you'll notice that quantity went up from q1 to q2 and the price that they charge is now p star so say these two are equal right okay so just bear in mind the scaling now notice at p star Okay, it's the bare minimum condition for the profitability criterion, which is that price should be greater than uh, or equal to long run average cost. And it's at this point here. And at this point, new firms that will opt to enter, okay, will make uh, after that point, uh, if it's at this point, new firms that will enter will make zero economic profit. Okay, so at this point, okay, economic profit is equal to zero. Beyond that point, economic profit is already negative. Okay, so when economic profit is zero, each firm in the industry earns only a normal profit and there's no more incentive for new firms to enter the industry. So at this point, uh, say I'm here, okay, if a firm is there, there's no point to enter because that firm will make negative economic profit. At this point, the firm makes zero economic profit, but they make normal profit as well. So uh, firms there will choose to stay. And this point here, P star, is essentially the last point that firms choose to enter, is said to be okay, what you refer to as your long-run equilibrium. This is your long-run equilibrium. And what you'll notice is what will happen is um, at any value, okay, at any value uh, of your demand curve, say, um, say for example, even if demand um, shifts to the right as well, so say demand shifts to the right to D1, uh, 
D1 that will prompt an increase in long run uh, supply equal to that long run supply prime. So we have another point here. Well, you'll, what you'll notice is that equilibrium quantity, since it's at this point already for the individual firm, we can derive okay, what we know as our long run supply curve as merely this curve here. It's going to be this straight line here. And this is your long run supply curve. Okay, that's going to be your long run supply curve. Now, we assume, okay, at the start of the video that we are operating in a constant cost industry. And that essentially means that the entry of new firms does not raise input prices nor cause external costs to existing firms or, and the new entrants. Then the cost curves of each firm, existing and new, will not shift as new firms enter. It just means that new firms don't really affect input the input markets that much so we retain the existing cost curves that we have okay so this is a brief graphical representation of uh, our market here in trying to derive the long run market supply and we're going to continue more with the mathematical assumptions and other cases such as decreasing cost industry and increasing cost industry in the next video